Well, thank you all uh, for coming here today on this incredibly beautiful fall day and a very special day for MU. Uh, my name is Jim Coleman. I'm the Vice Chancellor for Research here at MU, and I'm honored to, uh, to act as the MC and to welcome you to the groundbreaking for a new uh, research and education facility that will house the International Institute for Nano and Molecular Medicine, or as its leader, Dr. Fred Hawthorne, um, behind me here affectionately calls it, I squared and M squared. <laughs> and this, of course, just uh, <laughs> exemplifies, yeah, Fred's, Fred's complete and total focus on science, as well as perhaps his incredible optimism regarding what the average person thinks of math. But, um, so, but anyway. Um, and, you, and you'll get to meet Fred in a few minutes and experience that optimism, which is a great thing. Um, this facility will ultimately be a 25,000 or so square foot facility costing around $10 million that will house some of the most cutting research on the MU campus. Uh, so what is nano and molecular medicine? Any, anybody want to? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very small. Yeah. Uh, these are some words that I stole from Fred. but. Nanomedicine has no official definition, but it commonly, commonly describes the use of nanometer-sized particles, which helped all of you, right? I understand that. Um, which are thousands of times thinner than a human hair. And, and, and we can use these particles to provide unique methods to detect and treat diseases um, at, the, at the most basic level. Now, the ma majority of existing commercial applications of nanoparticle or nanomedicine have been oriented to drug delivery, of really trying to target drugs to specific places. But the real goal of nanomedicine is to create medically useful, very, very tiny devices that can provide controlled and selective functions in your body. For example, imagine just a tiny little atomic robot that could identify a cancer cell as soon as it comes and kill it. These are the sorts of goals of nanoscience, to have these sort of active molecules that can work in your system. Molecular medicine describes the use of diagnostic and therapeutic molecules of all sizes, shapes, and functions, which when used either alone or when attached to one of these little, little tiny small particles thinner than a human hair, um, can provide unmatched performance in treating or diagnosing disease. Um, and that's what will happen in this facility. And this facility will play a major new integrative role on the campus. First, as I, I think you'll hear over and over today from the speakers that have joined me on the podium, it takes advantage of the unique resources and incredible interdisciplinary climate that exists at MU. Uh, the research in this facility will merge the work of scientists in fields such as physics, chemistry, biology, radiology, nuclear engineering, veterinary medicine, and electrical engineering, just to name a few. It is, in fact, this unique climate, I think, that convinced Fred to come here where he can fulfill his life stream for science. Second, it'll serve as a major integrative force right here in this revolution ongoing in the area around you here at Reactor Park. For example, the 10 megawatt research reactor behind you is the most powerful research reactor in any academic institution in the United States and, in fact, the world. And it just had a groundbreaking a few weeks ago for a major expansion for its research capability and to house a new cyclotron. Um, the reactor plays a key role supporting the synthesis of radioisotopes and radiodiagnostic tools that are key to the molecular medicine aspect. And in fact, it is essential for Fred's work, because he needs the reactor, and essential for the institute to be proximal to it. Just to my left over here, you will see the Dalton Cardiovascular Center. And this institute will be drawing on the biomedical expertise of the researchers in Dalton as well. And then also over here, just sort of behind you to my left, we hope within the next few months to start the construction of our life science business incubator. And we, and we already know as we've just, um, as we now have uh, ownership for 20, 20 or so patents that Fred had developed while at UCLA, which he will add to here, and Fred hopes to be starting new companies that we hope will find their first footing in our life sciences incubator. So this, this institute now is sort of, going to be, this place down here is going to be transformed into a major cutting edge high technology life science place. So I am truly honored and humbled to share the platform with the distinguished be people behind me, all of whom you'll meet in the next few minutes. But I'm going to start by introducing you to Chancellor Brady Deaton, who will say a few words and will also recognize a few individuals in the audience. Dr. Deaton joined MU in 1989 as professor and chair of agricultural economics. He moved into the Chancellor's Office as Chief of Staff in 1993, Deputy Chancellor in 97, became our Provost and Academic Leader in 98, and our Chancellor over the last two years. 
I don't know how much how much I can emphasize to you just the incredible leadership and vision to this institution that Brady has provided, and it's been an incredible honor to work work with him. But just to give you an example of his leadership, and we just found out from data produced by the National Science Foundation last year that MU's um, MU has had the fastest growth in research over the last 10 years that there are data available of any institution in the AAU. So that's, yes, that's Harvard, that's Yale, that's Stanford, that's Berkeley, and more importantly to all of you, that's Kansas. <laughs> and hopefully we'll beat them Sunday too, right? So Saturday, yeah. <laughs> hopefully they'll show, yeah, hopefully they'll show up on the right day, yeah. Yes. Okay. okay, and on that happy note, let me introduce Brady to the platform. Jim, thank you very much. We're going to stay ahead of Kansas, and uh, we'll do it on Saturday, too. Thanks to all of you for being here uh, today with us. This is a very exciting time for us. Peter Adkins and President Floyd and Senator Bond particularly recognize your presence, and you'll be hearing from uh, everyone here on the platform uh, in just a few minutes. I would also like to introduce uh, Dr. Hugh Stevenson, former dean of the School of Medicine and former president of the Board of Curators. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's also Bernie Andrews, I believe, from Ready is here. Uh, Bernie, thanks for being here. And I believe Representative Ed Robb is with us. Ed, congratulations on your reelection. Appreciate that. I think you're aware, and uh, Jim Coleman has talked about it already, that a great university is built on the shoulders of great faculty. And we have a cadre of outstanding faculty here at MU. Our goal has been to ensure that that group has the capacity to move forward, to realize their life dreams and the contributions that their area of science can bring to us. And we have, with that, we have been so happy to add Fred Hawthorne. We have been wanting to have more members of the National Academy of Science develop and come here from elsewhere, and Dr. Hawthorne came here. And we're excited about what this today's celebration means for him, but also what it means for the cadre of scientists here on this campus, that great group that has been working to do so much in the life sciences, and particularly in the area of nanomedicine and nanoscience. Uh, in fact, Fred Hawthorne first came here, and we met Fred when you came here as a guest lecturer in honor of the work that Katesh Kadi was doing, uh, one of our great uh, scientists in the School of Medicine in the area of nanoscience, taking over the editorship of one of the world's most prominent journals. We then had our conversations, and Dr. Hawthorne came here because he was excited about the breadth of science that was occurring here at Missouri and such wonderful facilities as the research reactor, the, most, the, the largest, most outstanding reactor in the nation on a, university, on a university campus. So we had the tools to do the kinds of things that could enable Dr. Hawthorne with his work with cancer drugs uh, and to treat cancer patients he could take off with the facilities here and move us to a new level. And it's these kinds of facilities that uh, Senator Kit Bond has been so instrumental in enabling us to get uh, with, the Senator bon with the Bond Life Science Center, with other major research facilities on this campus that has enabled us to take these steps forward to address critical issues such as cancer, cardiovascular, and diabetes, uh, doing it from a medical school, veterinary medicine, engineering, agriculture, human environmental sciences, arts and sciences, biological sciences, that breadth of divisions that we have here. Well, you've made that possible with your support, Senator Bond, and to the scientists who have worked so hard here. Uh, you've, we have a combination that's a winning combination in today's society, and I thank all of you for being here with us and enabling us to take these steps forward. I introduced a few people right at the beginning. Let me add a couple here that are critical to what we're trying to do across this state and nation in providing leadership to the scientific world and to uh, the state of Missouri. With us is Dr. Bill Duncan, president of the Kansas City Area Life Sciences Institute. Bill, thank you for coming here. A great partner in Kansas City. I mentioned Ed Robb's victory early. Let me add another victory here. Uh, Judy Baker, member of our legislature. Judy, thanks for being here with us. Please stand and let us recognize you. We love a winning tradition, and we have two in the legislature here as part, as part of that winning tradition as well. 
Let me at this time uh, introduce to you President Elson Floyd, President of the University of Missouri, uh, who's uh, provided great leadership in this area. And uh, President Floyd, I invite you to the podium. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. <clears throat> Chancellor, thank you very much for the introduction, and thank each and every one of you for being a part of the celebration today. It is a celebration of excellence. Uh, we have been discussing for some time now the importance of the life sciences, making sure that as your public research university that we're doing everything that we can to be at the cutting edge of that engagement. To do so improves the quality of life, and there is no doubt, Fred and Katesh, that with your leadership and your involvement, we will be doing exactly that as an institution. It was about 18 months ago, as I recall, Fred, um, that we had a conversation about having, having, having Fred Hawthorne join us. Um, and, you know, Bob, we sat in my office and we talked about what those priorities are for the institution. And one of the real strengths that we have as a university is the interdisciplinary nature associated with all of our work and activities. The International Institute for Nano and Molecular Medicine will be yet an example of that. What we are trying to do is to pull together the best of the best across this institution, making sure that we do everything that is expected of us as your publicly held institution to make an indelible imprint on what happens. You know, if we talk about excellence and quality and what it takes to build a premier institution, it really does take foresight, it takes commitment, and it takes an understanding of what, in this instance, Missourians want and how we can translate that into our research laboratories in our classroom. There is no doubt that we have the right team in place. Katisha, if you stand up, I want to acknowledge you and Fred as well. Fred, if you, if you would do so, um, because this is indeed the group that's leading this effort. Well, I just learned something I want to just simply share with the audience. Um, it's my understanding that a bar actually sat on this site. I doubt if there were any toasts to a nanotechnology uh, institute here, um, but that's, that's my understanding. I also understand that actually if you were to look at the flagpoles that behind us, that, was, that used to depict the city limits of Columbia. I must tell you, the city limits of Columbia now are ubiquitous, and this institution will do exactly that, making sure that we continue to extend the presence and the growth of our research and our scholarship. We have today an incredible cast. Um, Senator Kit Bond is here. The senator will make some remarks in just a few moments, but there's probably no one in the U.S. Congress who clearly understands the role of a dynamic research institution and what it really does take to invest in that. And Senator Bond, we are always grateful for what you do in that regard. Well, leadership starts at the top, and it's my distinct honor and privilege to ask curator Tom Atkins to come to the podium. Not only has he provided leadership as a member of the Board of Curators, but he has been a long-term businessman in this community. He has a deep abiding affection for the University of Missouri and the type of work that we're engaged in. And he clearly understands the nature of the relationship between this university and Columbia and what needs to happen here in central Missouri. And as he reminded me the first time I met him and his wife Linda in their home, that there is nothing more important than the University of Missouri. And the fact that we must be very good neighbors with the community that we are a part of and never ever forget the importance of the contribution that you, this university must make to the state and then the impact that we'll have nationally and ergo the impact that it will have internationally. Tom understands that better than anyone else. It's my honor to bring him to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Floyd. Good afternoon, everyone. I will always consider this day as one of the greatest days in my tenure on the Board of Curators. The work performed in this building will lead to achievements that will undoubtedly benefit the entire world. On behalf of my colleagues on the University of Missouri Board of Curators, I am proud to welcome you to this groundbreaking ceremony for the International Institute for nano and molecular medicine at the University of Missouri Columbia. I made it through that, great. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to see so many faculty, alumni, and friends of the university on hand today. Without your support, leadership, and vision, we would not be here. 
We're also honored to have as our guest Senator Kit Bond. We know how busy Senator Bond is, and we are grateful that you could join us, Senator. The researchers at the International Institute for Nano and Molecular Medicine will work to revolutionize methods for detecting and treating disease. I know firsthand that the physicians and faculty of the University of Missouri are truly outstanding and provide excellent care. I've said for 22 years that Greg Flaker and his staff of doctors and nurses keep me above the side. <laughs> With this institute, we have yet another opportunity for our world-class scientists to work together to find cures for diseases like cancer. This is truly science serving all humankind. We look forward to the cutting edge research that will be conducted at this institute. We also look forward to the discoveries that have the potential to improve all of our lives. In closing, I want to express my appreciation and that of the other curators to all of those who worked long and hard to make this institute a reality. We thank you. Thank you so, so much, Curator Atkins. Um, before I go further, I did want to just uh, acknowledge a few other uh, people that have been very important to this project. First of all, the Campus Facilities Project Team, if any of you are here, um, could raise your hand. Jude, oh, is a few, great. Um, the, the, the architect for the wonderful building you see over here will be, will be Clark Anderson Partners, and I don't know if any of the architects are here. Great. And the contractor whose hands were putting uh, this really important building in, so you have a lot of responsibility, uh, is United HRB. And if, if anybody from United is here, great. So thank you all. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Dean of MU School of Medicine, Dr. Bill Christ. Uh, you all know Bill, but I'll take a couple sentences to introduce him anyway. Um, he's been an amazing partner for me to work with in the last three years as we continue to try to build the research capacity of MU. And I think most of you know this, but I get to experience on a daily basis that he works tire truly tirelessly to build bio biomedical research at MU. And he does it because he sincerely believes that we have to do this to ensure that Missourians can benefit from the amazing progress that has occurred and that will, he believes will continue to occur at, at, at revolutionary rates um, from, of biomedical research. The recruiting of Fred Hawthorne, as well as many other bi incredible biomedical researchers to MU, and this new facility are testaments to Bill's tenacity and incredible vision for the future of what can happen here in Columbia, Missouri. So I'm truly honored to introduce Bill to the podium. Thank you, Jim, for those kind remarks. <clears throat> It's my pleasure to join every one of you here today in celebrating the beginning of the construction of MU's International Center for Nano and Molecular Medicine. When the President of India spoke recently at an international conference on nanotechnology, he praised this university for making discoveries that could transform the treatment of cancer. Countries throughout the world should follow MU's example, he said, by supporting this new field of science with seemingly limitless applications. MU is keenly aware that medicine, microchips, fuels, textiles, and more could change radically through further development of nanotechnology. As a result, we've made significant investments in emerging areas of nanoscience, particularly as they apply to medicine. With the assistance of leaders like Dr. Fred Hawthorne, we are recruiting new faculty members, enhancing our infrastructure, and gaining an outstanding reputation in, in nanomedicine. For example, the National Cancer Institute recently awarded Dr. Katish Katti and his research team at MU a Cancer Nanotechnology Platform Grant, which is one of only a dozen such grants awarded to institutions across this country. Other collaborating researchers, like Dr. Wynn Volkert, helped MU and Truman Memorial Veterans, uh, Veterans Hospital to create a cancer imaging center that is supported by a $10 million grant from the National Cancer Institute. Nanomedicine clearly promises an enormous return on investment. In terms of improving human health, medical experts predict that most new drugs, drug production, will eventually use nanotechnology. 
Other returns on investment will appear in the form of additional research grants, unique training opportunities for postgraduate students, and inventions that could be commercialized by Missouri companies and others. For example, the National Science Foundation estimates the global nanotechnology market, listen to this, Senator Bond, will be worth a trillion dollars by 2015. Last year, the U.S. government allocated more than a billion dollars to nanotechnology research, more than twice what the government spent on sequencing the human genome when the project was at its height. These are indeed exciting days for nanoscience and nanomedicine. I hope the institute we are celebrating today becomes the home for many new discoveries and new scientific applications that will ultimately improve the lives of citizens in Missouri, this nation, and throughout the world. It is now my pleasure to introduce my good friend, Dr. Robert Churchill, the School of Medicine's Lodwick Distinguished Professor and Chair of the Department of Radiology. Bob has built ex an extremely successful research training and clinical programs in radiology, and all of us are grateful for his key efforts in recruiting Dr. Fred Hawthorne and other outstanding faculty members to MU. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Rob Robert Churchill. Uh, thank you, Dr. Christ. Well, many of us uh, met uh, Dr. Fred Hawthorne for the first time, as Brady mentioned, uh, in the spring of 2005. And um, uh, he was here about two and a half days, and Katish uh, pretty much wore Fred out over that time after when he, he wasn't involved in you know, the ceremonies, showing him our entire campus and giving uh, Fred a real flavor for what's going on here. And he went to the reactor and lots of other departments. And um, so anyways, uh, by the time those two and a half days were up, uh, Fred had already talked to at least three groups of researchers here on campus about doing collaborative research uh, with them while he was out at UCLA. Uh, we had a, uh, a meeting with Brady uh, just before we took Fred to the airport uh, his final day, and uh, we had a, some frank discussions, and Brady just raised the possibility of uh, perhaps Fred uh, coming to MU. And so um, the room got a little quiet after that because uh, nobody really knew what to say exactly, <laughs> and including Fred. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so that was, that was it for a while. About uh, two months later, uh, Dr. Caddy came by my office and he said, uh, let's go visit Fred at UCLA. And I said, Katish, we're talking about the Fred Hawthorne. I mean, you want to go out to UCLA? He said, yeah, come on, let's go. So we went out in June and uh, Fred picked us up at the airport uh, bright and early in the morning, it's probably around 8 o'clock, and we talked nonstop for the next 14 hours. We didn't even notice the mild earthquake that hit LA <laughs> while we were eating lunch, honest to God. And then we carried on the discussion uh, through breakfast the next morning and uh, when Fred took us to the airport. So we came back and reported in and we decided to see what we could do on this campus to uh, uh, do what we could to attract Fred to come to MU because uh, the discussions that we had were so, so fruitful. Um, now, it's clear that Fred is uh, one of the most uh, highly distinguished and um, world-renowned scientists uh, that uh, we have in the United States. He is known worldwide. And he has uh, won all sorts of uh, important honors. Now, a lot of people look at someone's CV by the number of articles that they have uh, authored and the number of patents and things and the number of pages of the CV. We measure Fred's CV in poundage, okay? <laughs> And I would just like to mention about three things uh, in, in his CV. Uh, as uh, Brady mentioned, uh, Fred has been a member of the National Academy of Sciences since 1973. In 1998, the regents of the University of California system bestowed upon uh, Fred the honor of university professor. That is the highest honor that they can bestow on a professor uh, in the University of California 10 campus system. A year ago, there were only two active members uh, on the UCLA campus, and today there's only one active member on the UCLA campus because the other one is sitting to my, uh, my right. But you know, all of these uh, things about uh, Fred, all the honors and uh, things that he's achieved uh, don't really come close to describing Fred. 
Um, and and Jim Coleman said it that, that you know you're going to get a chance to experience Fred. Fred is an experience. You have to experience him. He is a phenomenon. He is the most enthusiastic person I have ever met in my entire life. He is a wonderful motivator. He has told us what is possible. He's told us we could do these things. And I think, you know, we weren't believing so much in ourselves till we had someone with unimpeachable credentials come to MU and explain to us exactly what we have here, that we're sitting on something that exists no place else in the United States. And so there are some projects that uh, Fred is doing uh, in research that are going to greatly impact the Department of Radiology. Uh, one is in uh, cancer uh, therapy, uh, one is in imaging, and one is in cancer detection. I won't go into the details. Fred may talk about those a little bit. But what I want to say is it's been a truly a team effort to get Fred to come here. And I think that Fred is a resource not only to the entire campus, but to the entire university system. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Fred Hawthorne. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it appears that I have uh, underestimated the power of uh, cold weather in Missouri. <laughs> and uh, I. Uh, my memory, I, having been a resident of Missouri many years ago, I, uh, and I was much younger, so I could handle this better. But, uh, but anyway, it's glad, I'm glad to be back, and I'm glad to be at uh, MU. Um, a year and a half ago, I guess uh, a year ago, April, uh, all of this was a dream. And it was uh, all, everything stemmed from this conversation that, uh, we had in uh, Chancellor Deaton's office, and he, he said, we'd like you to collaborate, and by that we mean uh, relocate, and I, uh, it, Bob thinks it was, a, it was silence. No, I was talking to myself under my breath and, and uh, arguing with myself. So I went home and I told my wife uh, that, uh, we, you know, I'd really like to explore this possibility uh, because I, I, this is over an act of God or something I had discovered uh, in Colombia, everything that I had been seeking in one place throughout my entire career. And that's a big order. Uh, but one of the things that I uh, uh, I'm very intrigued with is the possibility of a, a new binary radiation method for cancer therapy. And this is called boron neutron capture therapy. For this you need uh, smart boron compounds which will localize in tumor cells. Also you need the other component which is a source of, uh, which are neutrons, and so you need a source of neutrons. Uh, there are two or three ways to make neutrons, but the most common and economical method is uh, uh, an example of that method is, a, a, uh, is right across the road here. That's a, a nuclear reactor. Uh, one needs uh, boron, a nuclear reactor, and then you need other things as well. And th those are the simple things to get. These are materialistic. You need people. You need people with a challenging... Uh, uh, mode of, uh, of, uh, of scientific living. They, want, they wouldn't mind taking some chances with you, and they uh, are well trained in their respective areas. And these areas are, are medicine, uh, veterinary medicine, because you must deal with a large number of experimental animals, <clears throat> uh, people in, in nuclear engineering, uh, cell biologists, immunologists, surgeons, uh, people who are uh, practicing oncologists, you know, know a lot about cancer, radiation oncologists and the like. So there's a host of people that one must bring together in one site in order to do this effectively. And that's what I recognized uh, in Columbia. I, I see all of these people, all of their facilities uh, present and uh, accountable. <clears throat> and what we don't have, we know where to, to get uh, uh, substitutes. 
and we need a few of those. So the, uh, the components are all in place here, and I feel that if uh, we're ever going to be able to uh, provide a proof of principle for boron neutron capture therapy of cancer, we'll be able to do it in Columbia in the, the next few years. Uh, I might add that not only is this uh, therapy uh, going to be useful for cancer, uh, it should also provide a means of uh, controlling uh, crippling arthritis, and that, that's a, a secondary, but I also feel very important uh, application of this, this method. Uh, Bob. Uh, Churchill mentioned the, the, what I've just talked about. Also, other things that we're interested in are, are new uh, MRI contrast agents that are targeting, that, we, that can be targeted rather, uh, to active sites, uh, uh, sites uh, in the body that are getting trouble and thus uh, visualized. Also, coupled with, with this uh, is a uh, uh, some untried but very attractive methods, uh, at least on paper, to enhance the speed <clears throat> and simplicity of uh, positron emission tomography, or, or PET, a method, a uh, very, very uh, new and very uh, attractive method for uh, imaging um, various diseases, including cancer. So those three things we will do in this building when it arrives. Um, I, I want to thank everybody in the administration, everybody in, in uh, the planning office and uh, our architects, Clark Anderson, uh, especially Greg Laddick, who is principal architect of the building. We put this design together in five days in May. And we did what was called a charrette. That's French, and my French is pretty poor. I <laughs> suspect there's another way of saying this. Uh, what it means is the users, the architects, and the owners, the university, come together, and uh, in, you know, no one leaves town until a design is on the table. And we actually had it done in four days, and the fifth day was just to sort of shake it out. And uh, it looks very much today uh, in the blueprints as it looked when we completed the charrette. And uh, I recommend that to anybody building a house or anything. You can get it, you can get it, get it out of the way quickly. And uh, uh, if you have good people working on it as we did, uh, then uh, things will work out properly. Well, I far exceeded my time limit here, and I'm sorry for that. But uh, uh, it's, it's, I'm very excited by today. And I'm very excited about your attendance and your support. You're a great community. And uh, my wife and I are extraordinarily uh, happy with Columbia and its uh, inhabitants, the university, and my colleagues in the university. And I want to thank Katish Caddy for inviting me here initially. It allowed all of this to uh, germinate and become a a uh, finished, almost finished product. So, thank you, Satish. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fred. So, when you talk to Fred afterwards, remember I squared and M squared. Apparently, Fred has many other talents, too. I've heard, I think you're like the world's best fisherman with a plastic worm or something, isn't it? <laughs> um, well, there's, there's one more speaker, uh, the so-called sort of cleanup speaker, and there could not be... <laughs> this is a positive thing. Okay. There, truly, there, there truly could not be a better cleanup hitter for, for, for life sciences than uh, our next speaker, Senator Christopher S. Kit Bond. Um, as a life scientist and as a chief research officer for a major university, I, truly, I am ever so thankful that Senator Bond decided to seek office. Um, I think it is safe to say that he's been perhaps the nation's leading advocate for promoting and supporting basic research in the most cutting edge life sciences, such as the research that will occur in the facility that we're breaking ground for today. And he's also embraced the role that that research will play in improving the lives of citizens of this state and the nation and the world. 
And I think, as most of you know, Senator Bond has played an absolutely immense role in turning MU into one of the nation's major research institutions, as well as an ever important economic engine for the state of Missouri. In fact, there's no question that his support for research and research infrastructure across campus is one really major reason that MU has led the AAU in its growth in federal research, both in terms of the money he's been able to support and the fact that he's focused on infrastructure that's enabled us to take that money and move forward. Furthermore, I think most of you know that you can see all over campus the result of Senator Bond's efforts in Congress to ensure that Missouri citizens are at the cutting edge of life science technology. Um, I th hopefully you've seen the Christopher Bond Life Sciences Center. Um, we have an internationally acclaimed imaging center um, that was funded by NIH, but that wouldn't be there if it weren't for Senator Bond's ability to help secure funds to renovate the VA hospital. And as I mentioned before, Bill Christ has recruited amazing faculty to MU, and those faculty would not have come if they did not have renovated laboratories that were paid for by some of the work that Senator Bond has done in Congress. Now, what you may not do know is that Senator Bond has also played a key role in the revolution that's occurring right here uh, by in this research park or reactor field. His support has provided key resources enabling the research reactor behind us to flourish. And now that's become a major source of life-saving radiopharmaceutical drugs. And in fact, for example, the, the major treatment uh, for, for inoperable metastatic bone cancer was invented and produced at the research reactor behind us. Um, if you look over to my left, your right, you'll see the Dalton Center. You'll see uh, just last year or two years ago, we had, a, we had a dedication for an expansion of that research facility, again, help supported by Senator Bond. And just to, so you know the results, just a couple weeks ago, um, one of the faculty in Dalton reported an amazing new discovery where he was able to get adult stem cells in mice to differentiate, differentiate into spinal nerve cells, perhaps leading the way to cures for, right now, uncurable spinal diseases. And then I think most of you know Senator Bond worked hard to help the campus secure a $2.5 million grant from the U.S. Economic Development Administration to construct our life science incubator that we hope to break ground on um, in just a few weeks. And that helped to launch a great partnership between not only MU and the federal government, but with the state through Governor Blunt's Lewis and Clark initiative um, and our legislator support for uh, getting this initiative through with the Department of Economic Development and its support to make this happen, the local community, our city, our county, and private sponsors to help Mid-Missouri realize this incredible ability to take our science and to turn it into jobs. So um, I hope you can see that Senator Bond has just played a massive role for science as a nation as well as for this campus. And so as always, this is one of my favorite parts of the job. I get to do this about once a year where I get to introduce him and thank him, I think, for all scientists in the country for what he's done, not only for MU, but for the nation. So thank you, Senator Bond. Thank you very much, Jim, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what a thrill it is to be here today for another very, very exciting new breakthrough. I'm, uh, I'm here today as, uh, as a cheerleader, as, as one to say thank you to all those people involved. This is so great that not even a Big 12 official can mess it up. Uh, but uh, moving right along, this, uh, this, this is a new era for medicine. And certainly the Institute for Nano and Molecular Medicine uh, will do a great deal in, in enhancing further this great institution's reputation as a research, uh, world-class research center. Uh, we all know the, the dangers of, and, the, and the threat of cancer. It used to be a, an almost certain death sentence. Uh, now uh, uh, it's still the second leading killer in America. But the advances in biomedical research and the efforts of pioneers in this field uh, mean that a cancer di diagnosis does not mean death, and uh, we now have new ways to fight and cure some forms of cancer with pharmaceuticals rather than surgery. But many doctors and scientists have dreamed of going even further, and that's why we're here today, because we already had some uh, uh, world-recognized scientist, Dr. Caddy, uh, and uh, his work uh, had shown the way. And uh, Dr. Caddy, thank you for your great achievements, which brought uh, Dr. Hawthorne here. Uh, 
Bob and Bill for your work and Brady Deaton for uh, your salesmanship. Uh, that was a heck of a job to get him to, to pull up and come here. And uh, it, is, uh, it has been a thrill for me uh, to get to know Dr. Hawthorne, as was uh, indicated, as hinted at by Jim. Uh, he, uh, he showed me how to fish in, uh, in Missouri ponds when we had the opportunity to be together. So this is a man whose scientific knowledge goes beyond the very little things. And although <coughs> all of the bass he caught were rather small, I thought it was only fitting that he, <laughs> that he was catching small bass. I was, I was trying to teach him how to catch big bass, but he really showed me how to catch the small bass. And he does... <laughs> Uh, but we, we are so excited uh, to have uh, Dr. Hawthorne here, uh, and uh, I, it's, it's my pleasure once again to commend the, the, uh, the research community at the university. You're the ones who provided the field, provided the, the, the basic human capital that is so important in furthering this breakthrough, and uh, I will do all I can to help uh, from my, my position to ensure that uh, the university has the resources. But right now, uh, Elson and Tom, you have established an institution which is gaining ground, gaining uh, worldwide recognition because what you're doing, and I see nothing but a great future ahead. And certainly that future looks a whole lot brighter with this new I squared for M squared uh, facility. <laughs> Uh, that uh, you break ground on today. It's, it's uh, my pleasure to join with you and offer the heartiest congratulations and best wishes uh, to Dr. Hawthorne, Dr. Caddy, uh, Dr. Chris, uh, and all of you uh, for continued success and great breakthroughs in the future. So now it's time for us to turn some dirt. Um, but, bef so, but before we do this, I want to make sure you all know that we have refreshments and that you, we hope you all stay and partake in uh, just enjoying the, wonder the wonderfulness of this day. And so uh, with that, I'll ask uh, our podium, our platform members to come on down and grab a shovel.